official introductions for this professional welterweight contest. First of all, introducing the fighter on my right, fighting out of the red corner and wearing the black and white shorts. He has an unbeaten professional MMA record of six wins with no losses and no draws. From Team Revolution Wiltshire, Scott Cliff. And introducing his opponent on my left, fighting out of the blue corner and wearing the black shorts. He also has an unbeaten professional MMA record with three wins, no losses and no draws. He is a Liverpool fighter fighting out of Atherton, Submission Wrestling, Dan Rushworth! Welterweight action about to get underway at OMAX 16. I'm David Leatherby alongside me, Jay Furness. Scott Clist out of Team Revolution in the white and black shorts. Taking on ASW's Dan Rushworth in the black trunks and Fast and Furious start here, Jay. You know, they're wasting no time, these guys. Wow. Both throwing heavy leather. Yeah. Dan, Dan yeah. Rushworth, excuse me, Jay, he's one of those guys I've seen uh, I've seen some fights. I saw his pro, pro debut, I think it was, against Harry Zabiji in Stoke. When somebody hurts him, he comes back twice as strong. The exact same thing happened last time at the uh, Cage Contender Fight South tournament in December. Um, he got clipped, put down early, and came back to win by TKO. So, Cliss throwing these kind of shots is, is not going to phase him. He seems to revel in it. Yeah, I, it was so raw. It's interesting to see the progression of Rushworth. When, when I saw him make his debut, obviously it was raw. You know, it was his debut, but it, it just strength and power you could see was there. You could see great oh. potential and beautiful knee there from Dan Rushworth. But Cliss, to his credit, Jay, trying to put his stamp on this round. Yeah, yeah, nice use of the clinch there from Rushworth. And he's uh, he's blooded up the nose of his uh, opponent with that one. That was a heavy knee that landed. And I think, I might be wrong, but it looks like both guys are bleeding heavily from the nose. Rushworth's could definitely be broken. It certainly looks off to an odd angle. But he's trying his best to uh, rearrange Cliss' face at the same time. Yeah, I th it's very hard to see. It, it could just be Dan Rushworth, but I'm not sure. There's so much blood, Jay. There's blood on the face of both fighters as you said Rushworth's nose he's breathing through the mouth as well it looks like here as a fighter yourself Jay I mean how bad we've, we've seen the likes of it in UFC Gabriel Gonzaga very famously against Randy Couture I mean what does that do to your breathing pattern certainly disrupts it and when you can only breathe through your mouth yeah the uh, the chance of getting knocked out with an open mouth is, is a lot higher when you can't clinch down on that gum shield and take a shot Neither man slowing down though from the uh, oh nice front kick there from uh, from Dan Rushworth. Yeah, neither man slowing down and they're both still throwing big strikes. Both guys trying to end the fight in this first round. Yeah, both look very heavy-handed for welterweight Jay. Those shots, we can really feel the impact of them in the cage. What a war this is! You weren't wrong earlier when you said Dave that. Rushworth seems to be fueled when he gets hit. It, it really comes back strong and Clist came forward there with some heavy punches and Rushworth just looking for big knees. You know, he's got a more diverse array of striking and seems to really revel on that on that getting punched in the face, which is a good trait to have if you uh, if you want to be a fighter. Yep, damn Rushworth putting his unbeaten 3-0 record on the line against Clist. Clist looking for an arm lock. He looks in quite tight, he's, he's switched off it really quickly. Rushworth looking content, but he's bleeding heavily from that nose. Looks in trouble here, Rushworth, but steps over. Crucially, that could have saved him. He's talking to his corner, Jay. Asked if he should roll out. They gave him the nod and he did it. Beautiful work by Dan Rushworth, and now he's in top position. The blood, Jay, from that nose. Yep, and uh, Clist, uh Billy Idol hairstyle is getting a bit of a remodeling. Certainly is as Rushworth looks for the ground and pound over the top. Some beautiful body and head work. This, all the blood though is, is not going to help uh, Cliss submission game from the bottom as things get really slippery under there. He eats a couple of elbows. Again looks for the submission. Very active off his back. But Rushworth is uh, savvy to it. Clist looking to use the elbows from the bottom as well. 
He's not letting Rushworth just lie on top of him. Always threatening with submissions and shots. Looking for an arm again. Shrugged off well by Rushworth. Triangle attempt now. He looks very dangerous from his backlist, but Rushworth is also landing hard shots of his own. It's a very 50-50 position this Jay at the moment. And as I say that, Rushworth passes to side control. Yeah, every time Cliss throws something up, Rushworth seems to have the answers. And now he's on top, he's got the north-south position. And a uh, big shot in there to the body. Clist works to his knees. Rushworth has to watch the back of the head there. And now Clist is on top, very back and forth. Very back and forth. It's arguable that Clist seems the more honed technician in the grappling department, certainly. But, but yeah, Rushworth is uh, he's not stopping for anything. He's taken another couple of shots there. He's going to see out this round, but now there's a cut on his left eye. Wow, what an absolute war here at OMAT 16. Scott Cliss taking on Dan Rushworth. How do you score that one, Jay? Because both fighters caused damage. Cliss looked to have the upper hand in the grappling department uh, with submission-wise, but Rushworth, he's one of those old-school fighters, Jay. He just never seems not to be throwing punches. Yeah, really impressed with uh, with both guys in that round. You know, in all ranges, really. Clist has been the one throwing up the submission attempts. Rushworth has been savvy to them, and he's, uh, he's worked his way out of all of them. In the stand-up exchanges, maybe Rushworth looking like he has a more varied attack, but Clist has got heavy hands, and he's done some damage. You know, I'd hate to be scoring that round myself, but I'm really happy that I'm watching it. Yeah, a real treat here in the Olympia. One thing you can say for Rushworth, the guy's tough as hell and he keeps coming forward no matter what gets thrown at him. And uh, of the few fights I've seen, you know, it seems to be a trend. So let's see what he comes out with in round two. Yeah, it's so important as well and often overlooked. I've had the uh, privilege of being around some... Oh, wow, big looping right hand. I was just about to say, yeah, I've had the privilege of being around some very decent cut men in my time. And it's something that a lot of people don't consider at this level, but Rushworth's corner will have had to do a lot of work because, as you said, there was a big cut on the eye as well, Jay. Yeah, and they stem the floor initially, but as soon as it gets tapped again, it, it's bleeding again. Uh, active start to round two by both guys. Uh, Clister's copped a foot to the face there and immediately came back with some big punches pushing his man onto the fence yeah excellent work from both guys neither guy looks like they want to take a break from this position Cliss possibly trying to climb to the back and just as I say that Rushworth spins into it yeah Rushworth he just seems as I said Jay not, not the most technical in the grappling department Beautiful left hook there from Rushworth. But he just seems to have the, the, the sixth sense for survival almost in there. Oh, beautiful uppercut from Dan Rushworth. Now looking for the tie clinch, but Cliss just bulldozes his man forward. He just does not stop coming forward. And he's been countered there. And now it's Rushworth who's teeing off with big punches and knees. Cliss is tough as hell Big as well. knee from Dan Rushworth. And he follows it up, but... Maybe not aggressive enough with that ground and pound straight away. And Clist has managed to get to the full guard. And he's going to try and tie Rushworth up there and catch a breather. He ate, ate some big knees. He did. I think that last knee dropped him. And, you know, we talk about it so often. Is Rushworth better off standing up from this position because he seemed to have his man on the run? But Ooh. then, you know, he shipped some shots himself, Jay. Yep. Neither man is afraid to take a shot, to give a shot, and uh, we've seen exactly that in this fight so far. You know, Clister's taken big shots, Rushworth's taken big shots, and now it's Rushworth who's trying to use them elbows from the top position. Russian, j just now and again, Jay, he fires one of those looping ground and pound shots that looks so hard. The kid has got great power at welterweight. I mean, to look, it looks like Clist is the uh, sort of physically more imposing figure, but Rushworth is, you know, he's doing a good job of, you know, 
maybe in the grapple exchange is not looking quite as technical, but he's definitely a fire and uh, he's using that natural instinct to keep himself safe and try and do as much damage as possible. Yeah, fantastic match up here. Very, very evenly matched up these two. An intriguing clash of styles. A real treat here in the welterweight division uh, on Max 16. Rushworth just using this top position to his advantage. Peppering away with the shots and trying to get through with them elbows. When he gets that space, Clist is tying up the head, really trying to keep his posture down to avoid any of the really heavy shots. If Rushworth can uh, can get his posture up, that's when the bigger shots are going to come in. But all credit to Clist, who's keeping that head control and using a good overhook to, to keep his man down. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's fatigue or perhaps just the slippiness, you know, the blood and the sweat in there. But Clist attacks from the back, Jay, a stop now, really. He's looking for the odd shot, but he's not playing the hard, high guard game, excuse me, he was in the first round. Yeah, blood and sweat will play a factor in that one. Um, he's opted for to try and work at more of an over up game and to just uh, bring Rushworth in nice and tight. But Rushworth working from all angles with that ground and pound. Not necessarily just looping punches or straight punches. He's, he's really coming over with the elbows. Yeah, wow, great elbows. Three in a row there from Darren Rushworth. I mean, the type of guy that shows he's got a guy on his back in Clist who's obviously a tricky grappler, but even in the guard position, Rushworth is able to land some devastating shots from top game. You do not want Dan Rushworth passing your guard into a mount position, Jay. No, nope. he's the kind of guy who, who you might call a true fighter who just throws caution to the wind. And as you say, Clist has shown himself to have a tricky guard, but Rushworth just elbows his way through it. And now he's got a good top position. Uh, Clist also just shows again how tricky he is and now he's switched and he's got a dominant position. Let's see if he can inflict some damage. Yeah, I think Clist was quick to give up the bat there and look for that transition. He definitely didn't want to ship any ground and pound and now he looks to take a dominant position himself. Ending the round with a flurry as Scott Clist. Wow, another great round in the books. A dominating round really for me, Jay, for Dan Rushworth. The first one's a close one. I, I see Rushworth taking that second round. Yeah, another excellent round, but uh, definitely more in favour of Dan Rushworth that round. He's, he's done well to come back from you know, a significant nose injury and a cut above the eye. He hit a lot of shots in round one, and it, it's a true testament to his character as to how he came back in round two. All to fight for in round three. They could be one apiece, Dave. Yeah. Another great battle here. When we were looking earlier on in the evening, you'd have had the Tommy Cook, Dave Graham fight down as a lock-in for fight of the night. But these two, Scott Clist and Dan Rushworth, really putting on a show here. Crowd really appreciating the effort from these two welterweights. And Rushworth, desperate to hold on to that perfect record. Yep, both guys undefeated, so they're both putting it on the line. Oh yeah, excuse me, yeah, Kliss is one is the no contest, yeah, so not something to beat himself. And they don't stop for a second as we come out for round three. The good thing about these guys is that in all ranges, they've just been non-stop and they've been attacking each other. On the ground, on the feet, just non-stop. Kliss looking for them heavy punches. Clist pressing the action here. Head kick landed there for Dan Rushworth. But Clist uh, just saw the opportunity to close the distance and get a takedown. Yeah, hugely impressed with how aggressive Clist was in that third round, Jay. I think he caught Rushworth a little cold. As I say that, he's nice. done well to reverse the position. Yeah, nice butterfly sweep there from Rushworth. He gets on top and he's shown what a good job he can do from this position in round two. He's on top in the half guard. And he's looking to pepper it with punches. We don't know how much energy reserves he's got left, but you can bet he'll use them all trying to uh, stick them elbows in, in his opponent's face. We got Rushworth going to look to throw some more of those short elbows in. Just peppering body, body, head, keeping busy, stopping the referee from standing it up. But I mean, I'm probably doing a disservice. It sounds like I'm 
I'm saying Dan Rusher have stolen out. He's certainly not, Jay, and I'm sure the massive looping shots are only just around the corner. Yeah, Clist has done a good job to regain the full guard. You know, and, and he's trying to work from the bottom. He tries to use his elbows. He's, he's very active from that position. And he's doing a good job of using the overhook and tying Rushworth up. But as I say, that a couple of left elbows sneak through there. And that, that right side of Cliff's face is not going to be feeling too clever in the morning. He hasn't really cut up from any of these elbows, though. He's, he's, he's shifted a lot of elbows, but he's not been cut. So he's, uh, in terms of how it looks, it doesn't look too bad, but he has taken a lot of punishment. Yeah, I think with lesser opponents, I think either of these guys could have gained wins already tonight, some of the blows they've landed. And it's just credit to them both. It's, you know, they've run into each other, and this is just such a hard-fought battle here. And again, Clist attacking for a submission. He's got the arm over the shoulder, maybe working for a triangle. But Rushworth doesn't seem phased by it. And he gets out. Now maybe. No. And Rushworth gets his posture back. Clist again looking for the triangle. He's looking it up reverse. He's uh, putting the, uh, the knot on the opposite side as to how you'd normally finish a triangle, but you can finish him from that position. Hook in the leg is Clist. Does well to square up his hips and pop out of that. Does Dan Rushworth. Hugely impressed with Rushworth's grappling here. As I say, we usually see a lot of his stand-up game, but he shows some good versatility tonight, as has Cliss to his credit. Yep, we've definitely seen a lot from both guys, and I've been impressed with, uh, with what they've shown us in the striking and on the ground. Cliss has spent a lot of it on his back, uh, but he's always attacked for submissions. He's, he's done some good striking. Rushworth from the top, he's, he's had the occasional pass, but he's been content to sit in the guard quite a lot of the time and, and land some ground and pound. Again, Clist, we're coming into the, the latter part of uh, round three and he's still attacking for them submissions, but this time Rushworth uses it to get past his guard. Beautiful little inside left elbow there as well from Rushworth. A lot of the crowd wouldn't be able to see it, but it was right in front of us, Jay. Just a cheeky little elbow in the side. And as you say, how many of them has Clist taken to the face? Uh, he's taken a lot of them, but he's still in there and he's still attacking. That like, non-stop really impressed with his work rate from the bottom, especially when it's not as if uh, Rush was trying to lay on top and not do anything. He's, he's constantly throwing punches and elbows. So, you know, you give up that, that few inches that an opponent can use to strike you when you go for a submission like that. But it's not stopping Cliss from going for it. Always trying to end the fight. Yeah. Credit to the welterweight division here. Scott Clist and Dan Rushworth. And as it stands at the moment, Jay, looks like Dan Rushworth could have figured out the puzzle that was Scott Clist early on and looks to be maybe moving in the decision victory. Yeah, he's edging close to this decision win. If he can stay on top, just 10 seconds left. And if he leaves it like this, for me, it's a win on his record. And he flurries with a... A big flurry of punches there to end this round. And there we go, three rounds in the bag for Scott Clist and Dan Rushworth. We're going to go to the judges. Yeah, handing over to the judges. Fantastic bout. What a fight! Crowd really appreciating that here. Scott Clist and Dan Rushworth really putting on a show of heart, guts and determination. Let's see how the judges have seen it. decision.
in favour of your winner and still undefeated in the blue corner, Dan Rushworth. But once again, please, a huge show of appreciation to our fantastic opponent, Scott Cliss.